Hi there you guys on YouTube land. I thought I would share one of my passions with you and that is recycling candle wax. Um, I love to make candles and the easiest way to come by large quantities of candle wax at dirt cheap prices is to recycle. Uh, I go to my local discount stores. I also use candles that I've bought and I start, that's how I started. And as you can see in this box I've got green candle wax. I separate them by color over there. It was wine. I had large boxes of white and red as well. Um, blue and yellow to the back there. And what I do with these candles is I melt them down. Um, back in the day when I first started doing this with some of my older candles, I had smaller pots and pans and stuff like this. And um, I found that it was a really good idea to go out and purchase a bit bigger pans. Especially for this bulk um, meltdown type of stuff. This is just basically your uh, little crock pot. I bought it at a second hand store. I would highly recommend that you don't buy new pans for this process. Just go to your second hand store, find pans that will work out. Um, this is a nice little pan I found at a second hand store. It's got um, a pour lip on both sides and so it's really good for pouring out wax. And what I typically do is I put all my wax in here and I melt it down with the wick and the everything in it. I make sure I take all the tags off of it. Melt it down by color grouping and then I take it and I scoop it out of the pot with one of these glass pitchers. Now you're going to want to be careful when you do that to not make contact with the wax because it's hot obviously. And then what I do is I take that pitcher of wax and I pour it into this filter and I would suggest going out and getting one of these little filters, especially when it comes to recycling wax. It keeps all the grime and the hair and any little pieces of fuzz or grit that get in the wax out of your end product. Now you will end up with a little bit, but it won't be nearly as much as, um, as if you hadn't used this thing. Then down here I've got my, um, this is a candy thermometer. Um, you'll need one of these to kind of determine the temperature. I like to pour it out of this pot at about 150 degrees. Um, that way it's shrunk down a little bit, but the top is still liquid. Um, I usually get a set of tongs like this. Um, it's for stirring the wax in the pot and that type of thing. Um, it makes it really nice to kind of be able to grab candles and stir it around and that type of thing. I always have a beat up old scrungy towel that I use to dry out the inside of my pots, um, take out excess wax and grime and that type of thing. And then over here, recently I thought of a very ingenious idea for making my molds for the wax and that is to go out and buy the small variety of baking tins. Uh, they pop out of these molds really easily. Back in the day I used to use um, cupcake pans and I used to make what I what I called wax pucks. I'll kind of show them here to you guys. <coughs> uh, they're basically around this size. Um, I used to call them a wax puck or tart and um, I have like probably about six bins here of wax tarts and as you can see with the bread pans they're the small there's like small medium and large the small is a nice size to work with you get a lot more wax in there that's probably the equivalent to three or four tarts and um, it just makes it so much easier um, cupcake pans are very difficult to get the wax out of unless it shrinks properly so um, with these what's really nice is the sides are flexible and I can kind of gently pull on the sides. What I have a tendency to do is fill up a tray and let it build a skin on top of it where the wax has gotten cold on top. Then I take that tray and I bring it over to my freezer and I slip it in on the freezer shelf just above the frozen tomatoes. And then I let it cool until the wax starts cracking away from the edge of the aluminum. And then I pull the tray out and I pop out the wax brick and that's what we have here. Now, as you can see, you guys, I have a ton of wax going on here. I've got uh, white, white, and cream going on. This darker color up front is green. Uh, I'm going to have two shades of green. This is kind of a darker forest green, and then this is the red wax. Um, two of the most popular colors that I've gotten are definitely white, as you can tell, and uh, red. I got a lot of holiday candles, people's past holiday candles, and pillar candles, and all that kind of stuff. Now, what I have a tendency to do with all this lovely wax is um, make candles, of course. And I get these seamless candle molds. Um, they're really awesome. They come from Yaley, Yaley uh, Candle Crafting. And um, I would highly recommend them. They're really nice. You can find them at Michael's and other places. And then um, when I'm making the larger candles, I have a tendency to get the thicker wick 
that type of thing. There's 50 yards on there, and I'm barely through that, and I've got two more left spindles. Um, you can add coloring to make your reds brighter and that type of thing. So just giving you kind of a little slice of what I do here. Um, I'll probably show you guys how I make a candle later. So until next time, namaste.